Australia Police is committed to equity within our workplace and uh, we're seeking to eliminate uh, uh, discrimination, harassment and predatory behaviours that may exist despite the efforts we put into those initiatives at this time. To that, to that end, I have uh, commissioned the Equal Opportunity Commissioner to conduct an independent review of the prevalence of sexual discrimination, harassment and predatory behaviour within the South Australia Police. It's important to point out that this particular initiative is not being driven by any particular act or event or issue. It is uh, an opportunity that we are taking after about 20 years of any similar work of this type being done to establish the health of our organisation in terms of the workplace culture that we provide our employees and to ensure that that workplace is as productive, healthy and safe as it possibly can be. The Equal Opportunity Commissioner will oversight this review completely independently of SAPOL and provide a report which will be made public at the conclusion of the review. South Australian Police employees, whether they be sworn officers, public servants or volunteers, are encouraged to contact the review team through the Equal Opportunity Commission and participate in a confidential survey or online interview or even a face-to-face -face interview if they wish to share their story in, in one of those formats. We're certainly encouraging our workforce to be involved in this, whether they have information about stories they've heard, incidents they've been involved in or affected by. It's, a, it's the only way we get true uh, benefit from such a, an initiative is if uh, our workforce uh, proactively participates, whether they have good news stories or whether they have issues that we need to address as we go forward. My commitment is to review the recommendations that are provided by this review and take any positive action that will enhance the workplace culture of the South Australia Police. I'd now like to hand over to Anne Burgess who will give some further detail about how the review will operate. Thanks Anne. Thanks Commissioner. So the Equal Opportunity Commission is very pleased to be involved in this initiative. We know that sexual harassment and sex discrimination are very common in workplaces and we know how destructive that can be to morale, to community reputation and trust. And so we feel it's very important that we can identify um, in some detail what the issues are for people working in SAPOL, uh, whether they find a level of everyday sexism or everyday sexual harassment that is preventing them from um, experiencing the promotions that they need, getting the leave that they require um, to participate in every sort of way. So we're going to conduct um, a survey, we're going to give people the opportunity to have off-site interviews, private interviews. We know that it's really important to make sure that this is done in an independent way because people are often very reluctant um, to talk about their experiences in the workplace. They feel like if they put their head up, um, they get it chopped off and their career suffers because of that. So we're going to, we put all sorts of protocols in place to make sure that this is a really independent process. The second thing people worry about in workplaces often is that nothing will change. They take a risk. Um, to make the sort of um, uh, experiences that they've seen or heard um, public. Um, they take that risk and then they think, to no avail, it's not going to change. And so um, the other thing that we've committed to is that we will uh, write a report that has recommendations to address some of the issues that we've heard about and that will be a public report and the Equal Opportunity Commission will continue um, to monitor those, the implementation of those recommendations um, and to follow up on that and, and uh, keep SAPOL to its commitment regarding that. So we think it's a really exciting opportunity uh, for all of SAPOL staff, whether they're men or women, whether they've had these experiences or not, um, to let us know um, the detail of that experience so we can make recommendations that have got some guts behind them um, that really get to the detail of what needs to change to make sure that the SAPOL culture is really welcoming of diversity. Uh, so this process is, um, is going to occur over the next 
five months. We have a dedicated team uh, that's going to work towards that um, and we look forward to uh, meeting you again with the report um, in, uh, towards the end of August. What sort of issues are you expecting to come across? Like you've sort of given it there, but are there particular examples, you know, that have sparked this? Um, as I said, we don't have uh, specific issues or concerns about our equity and diversity arrangements within the organisation. But we're also mindful of the fact that uh, SAFOL is a reflection of this community and there is always an opportunity to ensure that we are providing a safe and healthy workplace. So this provides an opportunity for people to come forward and share their stories or concerns. Uh, there was a recent review in the Victoria Police where one of the um, factors identified was a prevalence of under-reporting of these sorts of incidents. So whilst we are confident that we have mechanisms in place that allow people to come forward with complaints or concerns. What we don't know is whether there's any extent of under-reporting that we should be addressing. So this, this is a confidential opportunity for people to come forward and share their stories and give us an opportunity to uh, provide a positive change to our workplace if that is required. How many complaints have been lodged um, you know, in the past year? Do you have any stats on that? Uh, we do have the stats on that. Um, and I don't have them with me, but I can say there's no significant um, concerns raised from the prevalence of current reporting within our systems, and all of those reports that are received are managed uh, in terms of ensuring our workplace uh, is free of discrimination and harassment, um, and that we look after the welfare of individuals who do come forward. Um, but once again, it's about the extent of under-reporting that we're interested in, and I think this, this review will give us some insight as to whether or not we do have the issue of under-reporting in South Australia Police and that will be something we have to address if it exists. Do you um, think this review and subsequent um, changes might encourage more women to sign up to the police force? Well, that's, that's another important point. Um, I've made clear my intentions to uh, provide a gen gender equity focus within our recruiting structure and to recruit 50-50 men and women. I need to know that I'm inviting men and women to join a workforce that respects diversity, uh, provides a safe and healthy working environment. So this is, uh, this is an element to that, to ensure that what we're providing as, as an employer is an employer of choice that looks after its employees. Perhaps just a question for the um, other commissioner. Yeah. Um, do you think, like, this is specifically with the police force and you've been asked to do this, is that um, common for you to be asked to be brought into an industry to examine a particular issue? Do you think there are other industries that could benefit from this? Absolutely, and it is quite a common thing. I think um, a number of organisations, as I said, are trying to modernise the way that they deal with diversity in their workplace. And what we know is that often there's, there's a bias that can be unconscious as well. Um, cultures start to reflect um, some sort of bias and, and by having an external view, you can often identify what that might be to get to the bottom of that and to help people change their behaviours so it's a more accepting environment. So it is, um, it is something that the Commission takes on. We do a lot of training in organisations so um, and sex discrimination, sexual harassment is part of our everyday living in the EI Commission, unfortunately. So have you done reviews like this? Because you're saying you're going to release public recommendations. Mm -hmm. So do you do that sort of thing with other industries? Have you done that recently? Um, not recently that I, that I can talk about. Um, but it's not, it's not an unusual event. And just the mechanics of it, the timing, is mm -hmm. you like to report around August. Mm -hmm. So can people come to you at any point up to then? Or so the, the, review, the um, review over the next month will be getting out and talking to people in SAFOL in every, every sort of um, environment we can to let them know what's happening. Um, following that, there will be um, a confidential online survey and we'll set up interviews um, over that period. Um, and we will then um, look at what we need to report, how much time we need to take to draw that information together. Um, but that's the sort of timing we're expecting. Don't hold us to that just yet because this is day one um, and we've got a lot of work to do. Um, just another question for you. Sure. Um, it's 
something different. Um, one of your offices overnight, he seemed to advert a possible disaster at petrol station. I was wondering if you were happy to comment on his actions, what you might have uh, I don't have the specifics on those particular actions, um, but I think it's uh, admirable that uh, he was able to prevent any serious injury, which is obviously a, a good thing. It's been a year since the Chloe Valentine findings, and one of the outstanding changes is that agencies need to work together better, and it's something that's sort of in the domestic violence field being highlighted as something that's being done really well, but in child protection not so much. What do you make of that? Uh, I'm a strong advocate for uh, agencies working together and collaborating to ensure that we are providing the level of service the community expects. Our focus on domestic violence through the multi-agency protection service I think is uh, an excellent case study of what collaboration can deliver in terms of uh, greater safety for people who need the assistance of either the police or other government agencies. So what is your reaction to the news that those child protection laws were passed last night? Uh, look, our role is to ensure that we operate within our obligations and any of those uh, initiatives such as legislative amendment, uh, uh, commitments to collaboration that enhance our capacity to do our job in conjunction with other agencies is welcome. But with the NCA bombing, why has it been reopened and does it have anything to do with Tony Grosser? Uh, the, uh, the NCA bombing review has been going on for some time and as with any uh, unsolved crime or a without an incident where we don't have a resolution, we are continually reviewing. And we've recently put some resources into a review of the NCA bombing, and we're at a point now where we believe um, it's warranted to advise the community that that's what's occurring, and uh, we're hopeful that we can um, come to a conclusion with that that uh, produces a result. Have you had many more calls? I don't have any information. Just, just one last question, sorry, on the issue we were talking about responding to um, Royal Commissions and recommendations. Um, breaches of domestic violence orders is something that you said that you've really improved and that was raised in a report that was tabled to Parliament recently that there are still concerns that breaches aren't being taken seriously. Do you believe that that message is getting through to the force? Uh, to my people? Yes. Oh, absolutely. I'm, I'm, I'm com completely convinced that our focus on taking positive action against perpetrators of domestic violence, whether that be for uh, pursuing them for substantive offences or for breaches of uh, intervention orders could not be better. Having said that, we are a human organisation made up of people who are endeavouring to do the best job they can. And there will be occasions when uh, it might be the case that more could be done. So we are continually reviewing the level of service we provide. And I don't know the specifics about those concerns where it's been raised that uh, police aren't doing enough in terms of intervention orders. If that's the case, I'd like to see that information and I'd be more than happy to deal with it or respond to it if there are issues that need to be addressed. Thanks, ladies. Thanks, Thank you.